Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. You do actually join me today in my paddling pool at home, but I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the breathing techniques that I've been using for the past two years for both my spearfishing and my freediving, but also to suppress things like anxiety and panic attacks. That's enough of that, let's get on with the video. into the video I'd like to discuss a few things. Firstly, I am by no means a freediving expert. I'm simply creating this video so that I can share the techniques that I've been using for the past two years with you guys. But please don't take my word for it, there's plenty of other information out there that might be helpful as well. Also, yes, the wetsuit is definitely necessary because I need the weight belt and also this water is freezing. Also by the end of this video, I reckon if you follow the same techniques that I've been using and the same ideas to keep your mental state in check, then honestly, you'll be able to hold your breath for so much longer to the point where you could work out under the water, read a book, do some press ups, whatever it may be, you'll be able to hold your breath for longer. Now when you're trying to hold your breath longer underwater, but whether that be snorkeling, spearfishing, freediving, whatever it is, I like to think that there's three parts to a dive that involve your breathing. You'll breathe up before your dive, your last breath just before your dive, and then you're breathing when you get back to the surface. All three of those have extreme importance and they serve different purposes. So I'm going to start with your breather. Now what this is, is where you spend time on the surface of the water, getting your body in a sort of state of relaxation where you're going to be using less oxygen under the water. The aim of the breather is obviously to expel as much CO2 as you can realistically from your body because that build up of CO2 you get underneath the water is actually what gives you those reflexes which make you want to sort of gag for air at those last few seconds. So by expelling more of that CO2 you actually extend your dive time quite a bit. So let's go into the breather. So the way I like to breathe up is essentially by breathing from my stomach first and then breathing from my chest. The reason why I do this is because when you're breathing from your stomach first, you're utilizing all the space that is in your lungs. So if you were to just take a deep breath at home now, what you'll actually realize is that you end up sucking your stomach in. And by sucking, sucking your stomach in, then what you're actually doing is not utilizing all the space in your lungs. So the aim of the breathe up is to focus your breathing correctly. And by focusing your breathing correctly, you're calming your mental state, you're calming your heart rate, and you're getting yourself ready to go under the water. So when you're on the surface for a few minutes, you want to focus on your breathing. Now the way you want to breathe in is you want to breathe in for about six seconds, hold your breath for three seconds, and then breathe out for about 12 seconds. So when you're on the surface, you'll be breathing through your stomach, and then your chest. And when you're breathing out, what you want to be doing is breathing from your stomach first, Pushing the lung, pushing all your all the air out of your lungs from your stomach, then your chest. That way you're expelling everything from your lungs, and then you can bring it all back again through your stomach first. Now, if you were to just try what I've just said there, so breathing from your stomach, then your chest, and really focusing on how you breathe. Imagine that air coming right into your lungs, right down to the bottom, and then working its way around while you hold your breath for three seconds, three seconds, and then pushing it all back out. Honestly, you will feel so much more calmer, and you will genuinely feel your heart rate drop. And that is exactly what we're trying to achieve by doing this breather. Now, like I've said earlier, with breathing from your stomach first, it's really important to remember on your final breath that you take before your uh, drop into the water. Now, I like to think that there's three parts to your final breath that you take. So the three parts to that final breath is that you want to breathe from your stomach, so you're filling your lungs right up to the bottom, you're getting as much oxygen as possible. Then you want to fill up the main part of your lungs through your chest, and then once you think you're really full, you stop, and then you suck through your teeth the last few bits of air, and you pack them into the top of your lungs. And once you do this correctly, it will literally feel like you're about to pop, and that your lungs are filled right up to your jawline. And essentially, what that is doing is you're just packing in as much oxygen in, as you can into your lungs. And it will feel like your lungs are really expanding. It's quite an unpleasant feeling. But the second that you've gone one or two meters down on the water, the air pockets in your body, because of the water pressure, they just actually compress. And then that feeling just goes straight away. So for the final breath, what you want to be doing is breathing from your stomach, breathing into your chest, and then packing those last few bits now. Well, I'll show you how to do that now. So. I've done my breathe up, I've taken my last two breaths, and I'm just about to dive down. This is my last breath before I have put my head under the water. So what I'm gonna be doing is breathing from the stomach, 
chest. And those last few bits where you're packing it in, really got to expand, you really got to try and pack it in and just get as full as you can be. And then that will honestly extend your dive time by a significant portion because you will be surprised how much more oxygen you can fit into your lungs when you actually think you're full. So when you get to the top of your, you think, oh, that's a deep breath. No, it's not. You can fit so much more in just by going. And you pack it in. It looks pretty funny. I know you're probably laughing at the video right now, but honestly, it really does work. So there you have it. You've taken your last breath and you're now going under the water. The other thing that I like to remember whilst under the water is I like to genuinely think of my heart. I genuinely, in my picture, whilst I'm going down and I'm looking around, I like to imagine my heartbeat. And I can feel my heartbeat usually. You just sort of under the water, you can feel it because everything's so calm. And what I like to do is imagine that it starts to beat slower. I know it sounds pretty weird, but it really works for me. And essentially what I'm trying to do there is just completely calm my heart rate. By lowering your heart rate, you're using less of your oxygen in your body and you're actually extending the dive time. So when you're under the water, you just want to be as calm and as zen as possible and think about your heart rate. It's the same thing that sort of snipers use at times where they sort of go between breaths and they can slow their heart rate down so that they get a steadier fire. It's the same thing that I'm trying to do here is that I'm just trying to completely calm my body, get into a completely zen environment where it's almost a form, it's, it's, it is a form of meditation essentially. And lower my heart rate so that I'm going to use as little oxygen as possible. Now, arguably, the third part of breathing when you come up from the surface and you've just had your diamonds water is the most important. So once you come up to the surface, what I like to do is to just get everything, not shout, not panic, not whatever, don't get excited, you just got to stay zen, got to stay in that focus, almost like you're still under the water, and then just focus on your breathing. Come up, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Deep breath in, deep breath out and you'll slowly feel your body start to reset and you'll recover yourself and, you'll, and instead of sort of getting up to the surface when you're out of breath and being like <laughs> that hyperventilation can often sometimes cause a blackout so don't do that when you get to the surface even if you're wretched right before you get to there get to the surface breathe out calmly breathe in calmly and three or four breaths later you'll feel good as new now the most important thing to remember when you're diving is that you stay well, well within your limits. Never push your body too far, especially if you're diving by yourself. You really have to listen to your body and make sure that you don't push it too far. Because if you push it, that's when the problems occur, that's when the blackouts occur, and when you're under the water, that is not going to end well. Now everything I've just talked about up until this point, talking about your breathe up and those breathing techniques and the idea of getting your mental state, thinking about your heart rate, is the exact same techniques that I also use sometimes when you see, feel things like panic attacks coming along or you get a bit of anxiety. You focus on your breathing, you focus, you think about your heart, what is your heart doing? You slow that down, relax it, you think about your breathing, my hyperventilating, stop that, breathe properly, breathe through your stomach. You'll get more oxygen if you breathe slowly and methodically than you would if you just start. <laughs> so. That's the way I like to use that. I think I'm gonna end it there, because believe it or not, this pool is freezing. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like or comment if you've got any questions about anything I've mentioned in this video, then leave a comment down below, or you can DM me on Instagram, um, at Broly underscore Foster. Um, but other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.